Russian President Vladimir Putin has said that the United States will replace Ukrainian leader Vladimir Zelensky after spring 2025. Putin made the remarks while addressing a meeting with the heads of international news agencies. The law has to be passed and certain steps have to be taken. Now we are in June 2024, and in order to do this, I feel, it will take a year, until the spring, until the beginning of next year at the very least, he will be tolerated. When he is done, they will say, goodbye, Putin said. The Russian leader stressed that the West already has, a few candidates, for the post of Ukraine's president, adding that Zelensky's presidential term can be viewed as an attempt to seize power in accordance with the country's criminal code. Commenting on Zelensky's presidential term, Putin said, there is a law that defines the martial law status. It says that his powers are transferred to the parliament, and that presidential elections are not held as long as the martial law is in force. But it does not say that presidential powers should be extended. There is also Article 109 of Ukraine's Criminal Code, which says that this should be treated as seizure of power, Putin added. It should be noted that Zelensky will meet US President Joe Biden in France next week to commemorate the 80th anniversary of D-Day. Biden is also expected to meet with Zelensky during the G7 in Italy next week, according to White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. The two countries' leaders last met in December last year to make a plea for military support for Ukraine. Biden in April signed a bill providing over $60 billion in aid for military aid to Ukraine after several months of delay. Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense detected 26 Chinese military aircraft and 10 naval vessels around the island. 19 out of 26 Chinese military aircraft crossed the median line, which bisects the Taiwan Strait and separates the island from China. According to the Taiwan News, Taiwan also sent aircraft and naval ships and deployed coastal-based missile systems to monitor Chinese army activity in response to the Chinese move. The Taiwan Air Defense Identification Zone, declared unilaterally, covers an area of 492,000 square kilometers and considerably exceeds the island's airspace. It also spans the waters around it, the Taiwan Strait and part of the airspace over the Fujian, Jiangxi, and Zhejiang provinces in mainland China. Since September 2020, China has increased its use of gray zone tactics by incrementally increasing the number of military aircraft and naval ships operating around Taiwan. Gray zone tactics are defined as an effort or series of efforts beyond steady state deterrence and assurance that attempts to achieve one's security objectives without resort to direct and sizable use of force. Taiwan, so far this month, has tracked Chinese military aircraft 47 times and naval-slash-coast guard vessels 44 times in one month. Russia forcibly sends men who refused to fight to the Kharkiv front. Russia is forcibly sending men who refused to fight in Ukraine to the front in the Kharkov region. According to the Institute for the Study of War ISW, the invaders launched an offensive in the north of the Kharkov region when the northern group of forces was understaffed. Now the occupiers are being sent to this direction, awaiting trial. The opposition publication, Verstka, reported that Russian military authorities began forcibly sending hundreds of military personnel who refused to participate in hostilities to the front in Ukraine. In May, they were sent to the north of the Kharkiv and Donetsk regions. The scenario for such occupiers is the same. First, they are held in units awaiting trial, then the trials are suddenly cancelled and the men are quickly sent to Ukraine. Russian authorities used physical violence to force some soldiers to voluntarily go to Ukraine, while others were taken from their cells at gunpoint and sent to the front. According to the ISW, at least 170 such cases have been confirmed. Investigators, prosecutors and lawyers did not know about this. Verstka, citing several sources including in the Kremlin, writes that the Russian military is sending conscripts and incompetent reservists who signed contracts with the Russian Ministry of Defense to non-combat roles in the Russian border, troops, 
in order to free up experienced military personnel to attack north of the Kharkiv region. Recall, on May the 10th, Russia intensified offensive actions in the Kharkov region. The enemy managed to capture individual border settlements. On May the 23rd, the commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, Alexander Sirsky, reported that two weeks after Russian troops crossed the border into the Kharkov region to open a new front, the offensive stopped in the city of Volchansk, less than 10 kilometers south of the border and in Lipsy. According to him, in the Kharkov region, the Russians suffered significant losses and got bogged down in street battles for Volchansk.